Hey there, marketing research students and SPSS users. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a new variable that counts or sums up all the different items from se several variables and places into a single variable. This is very common in marketing research. Let's give an example of why we might be doing that uh, in this case. So again, we're using the craft beer 200 random subset data set. To go to variable view, we'll notice that there's five variables about a student's extracurricular activities whether they're involved in a fraternity or sorority, cultural-based student organization, religion-based student organization, academic or professional, and recreational sports. If someone said they participate in one of these, they'll flag it be flagged as a one. Otherwise, there's no mark. So we could argue that if someone is a zero on these numbers, they're not as engaged in extracurricular activities, whereas if they scored, say, a five or a four, they're highly engaged. Let's go look at data view and see how these exact variables, these precise variables, were coded. Here's our five variables right here. And something interesting uh, you should draw your attention. First, whenever someone said they participated in a uh, fraternity or sorority or another organization, it is in fact marked as a one. Yes, they do that behavior. We don't know how much they do that behavior. We know they do it. But in cases where they didn't check, it wasn't scored as a zero. It was scored as a missing piece of data. Neither one of those ways is right or wrong to score this as a zero or to have it missing. You'll often see either way um, Com uh, you'll commonly see either way done in marketing uh, research data sets. But the consequences of this particular choice, the fact that this data is missing and not zeros, does have some impact on how we're going to create our new variable. So what we want here is we want a new variable that would return a value of zero for this person, a zero for this per person, a one for this individual, and say a two for this individual. But we want this all in a single column. So what way might we do this? Well, probably the straightforward way would be simply, let's go to transform, and we'll compute a new variable. And for this new variable, all we could do is say um, SDSU extra, so for extracurricular, we'll call it one. And you'd simply just add up those values. So we have there this one, plus this one, plus this one, plus this one, plus this one. That's pretty straightforward, right? Just add those suckers up, and that will return our number from 0 to 5. If we hit OK and actually run this, we always know that new variables go to the end of our data set, so we can scroll all the way over. And clearly, something has gone wrong. We have missing data throughout the entire new variable. And we know that's not correct, or at least not what we wanted, because even just by glancing, we know this person should have had a value of 2 returned. What the heck could have gone on? Well, here's what's happening. When you try to add up values directly, every single one of these values can't be missing. When it sees a missing value in one of these locations, it doesn't know how to, SPSS doesn't know how to deal with the entire function. So what it does is it just bails out and gives you a missing piece of data. A better way to do this, or at least the way to do it that'll serve our purposes, will be instead to use a function. If you look over here in the function group under all, so there's all the different functions, I'm going to look for sum. I know that I want to sum up these values. Since they're only ones, every time they see a one, if they sum them up together, we should be good. I type in, I click down in here, and I hit, hit S. That takes me all the way down to the S's. And sure enough, we have a sum function. If I double click, it'll bring it into our expression pane here. And let's read what it says it does. It returns the sum, so it'll sum them up, of its arguments that have valid, non-missing values. Ah, that should give us what we want. It'll take those five variables, and it'll sum them, skipping over those that are missing. So we follow the rules here. Sum is in parentheses. And there's a question mark that's calling for us to add in our variable there, comma. And then we got to delete this next variable, the next question mark, I'm sorry. Add in a new comma, because now we have, we have five variables here, so comma. So we should have four commas, five variables, some close it up on each parenthesis, and let's make a new variable. Instead of SDSU extra one, let's call it extra two, and let's go ahead and run it. Sure enough, our new syntax has run right below our, uh, our old syntax. If we scroll all the way over to the right, ah, there we go. Now we got something that we're like what we're looking for. Cool. But something has happened here. When missing was true for all five of the columns of the old variables, it returned a missing value. 
That's not really what we want. When someone didn't check any of the extracurricular activities, we'd like it to return a zero instead. Can we tweak this? Yes, we can. If we go to transform, compute variable, it allows us to add any number of arguments. So we could add in another argument, comma, zero. Now that zero is a valid argument. So if we run this, replacing our old values, see, sure, in the case of, why did we get zero this time instead of missing? Well, if we look over at our old variables. These were all missing, but by adding in that comma zero, we still had at least one valid argument, an actual zero, that it could sum up. And it's the sum of a zero is zero. And of course, summing up a zero to those other numbers didn't affect anything. So we're good. We're able to use the function to merge a series of variables into a single one.